What's it gonna be? DK's making a snack today. Shove it right into your mouth. DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? Is he making it for me? DK's making a snack today. It's time for tactical snacking with DK. What is happening, folks? Uh, welcome to Monday. Today we're just making dinner. Um, I know it is Valentine's Day and everything, um, but here in the Hueso uh, household, Valentine's Day is uh, not, uh, not celebrated, really. Uh, and it stems back to back in the day when both Mrs. Hueso and myself were uh, very much single and just it was always just the worst day and so we never um, once once we got together and we got married and everything it was just you know we're, we're not going to celebrate it so like we don't buy stuff for each other we don't do anything oh it worked Oh, that is amazing. I set up a, a custom shout out command and a welcome message and it worked. That is awesome. Um, welcome, welcome, Grant. Uh, yeah, there we go. Check that out. Um, hey, Night Song. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, you like that, Grant? It is a... Uh, it's a... It's a bot called StreamerBot 
that is incredibly powerful and I've been looking at it to kind of take over um, literally any and all chatbot type stuff um, like and it's honestly one of those things that I think like Bally and Pio and Mally and like all the the god tier mods should have a look at because that one particular app has the potential to replace literally everything um, and so yeah that's one of the first things I figured out how to do was set up uh, automatic welcome messages and also how to set up custom shout outs which is pretty cool um, actually I would say more powerful like powerful like the immortal um, more closely is what uh, what I would say um, but yeah, no, it's super, super cool. And I was playing with it for a couple of hours today. In fact, when you were streaming, that's what I was doing, was working on that uh, and just kind of learning it. And I've only barely scratched the surface, but it's a super cool thing. And I am excited to implement like all the fun stuff with it. So it integrates beautifully with um, OBS. Um, it also works with slobs too, um, since I believe that's what most of y'all are using. Um, but it's, anyways, super awesome. But uh, back to the story. So yeah, Mrs. Oiso and myself, we don't celebrate the uh, Valentine's Day. That's just not, not who we are. Um, so today is just really like any other day as far as we're concerned. There's a hum on the audio, huh? Huh. I don't know why that is. Is it like just a background buzz or what exactly? Is it just a straight up hum? Wondering if there's like a loose connection. Either that or it's quite possible that the uh, the mic might be picking it because there's a, a giant CFL bulb, bulb right above it which is my key light and it could be picking that up oh yeah that is weird there's like this crazy hum huh I'll have to look into that but uh, yeah so tonight on the menu uh, I'm making grandpa chicken it's a family recipe uh, garlic mashed potatoes uh, roasted Romanesco and a tomato cucumber salad to go with it um yeah so let's get cooking um so for grandpa chicken it, there's a story that goes with it um growing up i only ever knew one of my grandparents uh it was my paternal grandmother um, by the time that I was born, uh, all of my other grandparents had passed away. However, uh, there was a gentleman that my dad had known growing up and became super close to. And um, that was Grandpa Jack. He was what we call intentional family. Um, maybe not related by blood, but someone that was chosen. And so uh, it's a recipe that he would make and we would go over to their place um, almost on a monthly basis and kind of have this big sort of family dinner with his family and then we would be there and so this is based off of his recipe um, I am never good at leaving well enough alone um, I always like to mess with things and so uh, that's kind of what I've done here and so his basic recipe was and there was never any measurements ever uh, that were done it was a whole bunch of lemon juice throw in a ton of chopped garlic salt and pepper and then enough Worcestershire sauce to make it kind of dark so there was like I said there was never any measurements done I've never measured it um, and so it but it's you know something that we love and we've used it on chicken uh we also use it on ribs uh which has also been really good so let me kind of show you what i did here got that's a this is a, what's called a saucier if you notice it's kind of like a high-sided rounded bottom pan uh it's a french term and the reason why it's got that rounded bottom is so that 
as the name suggests, being a saucier, you make sauces in it. And so because of the curved edges, a whisk is able to completely get to it and you don't have any weird corners. Um, it's absolutely indispensable and I use it all the time. Um, in the bag here, I have trimmed up um, a pack of chicken thighs that I got at the market, uh, similar to what I did for oven fried chicken, I think it was last Monday or something like that. Um, trimming off excess fat, scraping it. The one thing I did differently is I used a kind of a, a, a bladed meat tenderizer. Um, let me see if I still have it out. So the bottom is actually off on this, but you can see all these sharp little blades. Um, and what I did is I kind of ran it through the top as well as the bottom uh, to poke some holes in it. So then that way the marinade has a chance to actually really penetrate the meat as opposed to um, just kind of getting into the surface just a little bit. Um, That's one of the things about marinades that uh, they don't really talk about, but it's kind of important to know is that your basic marinade is only going to penetrate maybe an eighth of an inch into whatever it is that you're soaking. And so if you're doing a, a really large and bulky piece of meat, um, like I said, it's only going to get into the surface. It's not going to penetrate all the way to the core. So by hitting it with those blades and kind of making some holes and everything, it has a chance to actually kind of work its way in a little bit. Uh, the other thing is, as you see a lot of times on um, famously, I think it's like, what is it? Um, wishbone, Wishbone's Italian salad dressing or whatever. And they talk about, hey, this is great for using as a marinade. I do not recommend using any kind of salad dressing like that as a marinade purely because of all the oil that's actually in it and since animal proteins as well as us are predominantly made up of water and we know that oil and water don't mix the oil and the tissue they nothing happens it just kind of sits there and so you're just kind of wasting your bottled um, your bottled salad dressing on doing that sort of thing hey welcome to the party of Renfield um, so in this case, it's what I did is I used lemons, limes, and let me change the camera. There we go. Lemons and limes. And then um, I just recently got a package from my parents that contained uh, some blood oranges from the yard. And the, the ones I used specifically are uh, off of this one tree. And it's only this one tree for whatever reason that produces sour blood oranges. Uh, and if you've never seen a blood orange, um, they'll have various shades of red also on the outside of it. And then when you cut into it and squeeze it, the juice actually comes out kind of red. And it, I'm not sure if it really shows up on here, but you can kind of see a reddish hue in there. And that's from that blood orange juice. Uh, in addition to those three, um, those three citruses, there's a whole bunch of chopped garlic that you can see. Uh, and then there's also black pepper. And then I also threw in um, Korean uh, red chili flakes or gochugaru, um, just because I love the flavor of them. And, in, and other than that, the only other thing is the Worcestershire sauce, which is how we got kind of this brown brownness to it. And that's really it. So what I have done, uh, this is different than Grandpa Jack's method. So Grandpa Jack would fire up his little charcoal grill and it was just one of those flat ones that was round that you could raise the center pole up and down that had the grate on it. He would load it up with chicken, make his basting sauce effectively, throw the chicken on, grill it and baste and turn and baste and turn and baste and turn. And so he just made it over charcoal forever in a day. Um, I do not have a charcoal grill, nor did I feel like, you know, building one and firing up today. Uh, so I make it in the oven. Um, the other thing that I do differently, obviously, is I marinate as opposed to basting it like that. Um, but what I have done is, 
in the tradition of mothers, um, not, you know, the person that gave birth to you, not the Danzig variety that are going to tell you to, you know, not walk my way or anything like that, um, but a sauce mother, um, not in the French variety where it's like, oh, this is one sauce, you can make a whole bunch of sauces based off of it. But I will drain it into the saucier, which is why this is here, and boil it just to make sure that anything that's in it is killed off. But then I save it, and then the next time I go to make it, I just add more lemon juice, lime juice, etc., and then keep it going um, for however long. And it's one of those things that it just adds depth over time. Um, this is a technique that you see pop up all the time in um, like Japan and Korea. China does it quite a bit. Um, and there's a few places in the U.S. that do something similar, but it's something that I... Uh, I've taken to doing and have really enjoyed it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to drain out as much as I can before pulling the chicken out and getting it on my prepared uh, half sheet here that's got that Reynolds grill foil that I love to use. So let's see. Might just have to pull the chicken out. That's okay. I'm not too worried about uh, leaving bits of garlic on the top because um, I mean I'm roasting this at 350 for about 45 minutes, and then I will uh, take them out, pop them under the broiler. Uh, just to kind of brown up the top and some of that delicious chicken skin. So we love chicken skin around here. So what is everybody's plans for today other than just hanging out with whatever significant other that you might have or maybe you know you're practicing a, a little self-care today. Just curious what everyone's up to. Yeah, the custom shoutouts Renfield, that's a cool feature. Um, and I don't know if like Stream Elements or whoever does it. Um, I'm using StreamerBot and um, I found a tutorial on how to set up uh, custom shoutouts. And so it's literally an automatic command, um, which is super awesome. And I am loving it. All right. Then. Okay, so that's all saved and we're good to go there. And then I'm going to go put this over on the stovetop for the time being because I'm going to be roasting up uh, the Romanesco at the exact same time as the chicken. So I'm going to put them both in at the same time since they're going to both go for about the same amount of time. Oh, nice liquidity, making uh, chili, that's awesome. And oh, nice, it sounds like the parental units are having carne asada tacos tonight. If you've never seen Romanesco, this is Romanesco. And it is a relative of cauliflower, but it's like math got into the code and decided, hey, we're going to make fractal patterns out of uh, cauliflower. And I absolutely adore this. It is delicious. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to find, um, but we love it and I love roasting it up. Uh, it's really great that way. You can very easily steam it. Um, but that, yeah, we're just going to roast it up tonight. So all I'm going to do other than, because I've already washed this and I've trimmed off some of the, the leaves that are on there. I'm just going to kind of trim off the stem and then cut out the florets. And then I have a tray here that you'll notice looks like it's kind of dirty and it's because I've already used it. But what I did earlier was um, 
the roasted um, nuts from Saturday. And if you're wondering which nuts I'm talking about, I'm talking about these nuts. Um, we loved them so much in the salad that I decided to roast up some more, tossed with some salt and uh, butt glitter. And that's going to be going into the salad this evening. Uh, liquidity, uh, Romanesco, it's very close to straight cauliflower, but there's a bit of um, kind of broccoli in there a little bit. And I love both of them very much, so it's, you know, win-win for me. Plus, it's like I'm eating math, uh, which I think is super cool, but I'm weird like that. Um, so the baking tray here had the walnuts on them earlier with literally just a little bit of grapeseed oil, salt, and the butt glitter. So because this is going to be literally have the exact same thing on it, why, why throw that foil away to put more foil on to do the exact same thing? At least that's my thought process. So I'm going to go ahead and start breaking this down. I just want to trim that a little bit. And then sometimes it can be a little hard to kind of see where the individual florets kind of begin, but I will kind of slice around the perimeter of the stem in order to hopefully disconnect this first layer. There we go. Yeah, and the little leafy bits I tend to throw away, but then I try to aim for florets of roughly the same size, and in this case I'm thinking a smaller knife is going to be better. Yeah, kind of like a cooked cauliflower and broccoli. Um, I would say it's probably 75-25 um, cauliflower to broccoli in terms of its flavor, but uh, it's really tasty and we like it quite a bit around here. Okay, so we'll break this down just a little bit, it's looking good. that in half. And usually when it comes to breaking up florets like this, I kind of like to um, cut through the stem portion a bit and then wedge it apart so it kind of naturally tears, um, as opposed to just straight up cutting it usually. But that's just... Oh! New follower! Who decided to follow? Keifelman. Hey, welcome, welcome. There was a notification popped up here. That's something I'm going to have to address. Um, thanks for the follow. Curious how you found me. So, just going to go in on this one. Okay, that's oh, looking real nice. I've got a trash can right behind me. It's, it's not just disappearing onto the floor. <laughs> Well, welcome, Kaifu Man. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, where do you call home? Uh, are you in the U.S.? Are you in uh, another country? I'm not asking you to dox yourself, by the way. England. Well, welcome, welcome. I am located in the Pacific Northwest, and. Yeah, I've been cooking basically my entire life. 
and yeah a pretty new streamer I think I've been at this maybe what three weeks now but having a great time doing it and tonight we're just I'm just making dinner uh, nothing too crazy no you know Valentine's Day special or anything like that just making some delicious food for myself and the missus and talking my way through it and just kind of explaining what's going on and if should you ever have any uh, any questions about anything uh, feel free to just pop it in the chat if I miss it I apologize uh, at the moment I don't have any mods around it's just myself um, and if I don't if I don't catch it it's not because you know I'm ignoring you it's just purely because I haven't seen it so I'm um, just popping the Romanesco on the tray here Counter's clean. I cleaned it earlier today, so. Alright, let's. I've got my bottle of grapeseed oil and I am making uh, grandpa chicken which is a family recipe um, it's chicken thighs in this particular circumstance and they're being roasted uh, garlic mashed potatoes roasted Romanesco which is what I'm prepping right now and a tomato cucumber salad um, the grandpa chicken is a mix of lemon lime and a sour blood orange juice uh, Worcestershire sauce chopped garlic uh, black pepper and Korean uh, chili flake uh, gochugaru um, I didn't add any salt to it because there's plenty of salt in that Worcestershire sauce so we're good to go there so I'm just hitting this with a little grapeseed oil not necessarily a whole bunch I'm shaking it up just to kind of get it all coated and agitated and then just a sprinkle of kosher salt and then hit it with a bit of the butt glitter. If you're wondering what butt glitter is, it is a saltless seasoning blend that I make. Um, I made a video about it and if you check the uh, page description, um, there's a link to the YouTube channel. And it was a video that I made, I think maybe I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago. Um, but butt glitter is on there if you're wondering what it is. Uh, it's an all-purpose seasoning uh, that I have used on literally everything um, from beef, pork, lamb, chicken, fish, vegetables. Um, it's just straight up all-purpose and I absolutely adore it. So uh, it's a keeper, but the recipe is on there. So if you ever want to make your own, you are absolutely free to. So this and the chicken let's do that this and the chicken are now headed to the oven 350 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes um, and they're gonna go for the exact same amount of time and then afterwards when that's over we'll pull everything out crank up the broiler and then put the chicken underneath it just to crisp up the skin So the sauce is now on. Uh, I just have it on a low uh, flame at the moment, just so then that way, by the time everything's ready, it will have uh, reached a good temperature in order to make sure that it's completely um, pasteurized. Uh, so then that way I can hang on to it. Next up, the mashed potatoes. And I, I know this is why uh, Mr. G Money is here. Um, in this particular circumstance, I'm going to be making mashed as opposed to whipped. Um, 
So this is just a six quart casserole that I'm gonna put my potatoes in. Uh, my potato of choice when it comes to mashed potatoes is always, um, for us, Yukon Gold, a uh, good gold potato. Uh, I believe, oh, I forget the name of the, whatever the the most popular variety in England is. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Um, but a golden variety, which is not a very starchy, but it's also not a very waxy. It's kind of right in the middle um, in terms of its texture. And it is my preferred potato for mashed potatoes, bar none. Um, and so I've already kind of pre washed um, in this case, I think I did 10 potatoes, just trying to think. I was like, okay, well, how many, how much am I going to want to eat? How much is Mrs. Wayso going to want to eat? And we want to make sure that we have, you know, some, a little bit of leftovers. So then that way, um, tomorrow morning, if Mrs. Wayso chooses, uh, she can make a fried mashed potato cake, uh, to go with breakfast as opposed to, you know, like hash browns or some other thing. Yes, exactly, mashed potatoes. So this is this is one way that I do it. Um, but because I'm doing a mash, I'm actually going to be using my manual potato masher uh, a little bit later. And in this one, I'm actually gonna leave the skins on so it's a little bit um, rustic. And because the skins also have a lot of the, the vitamins and um, any of the nutritional benefits so this is you know gonna have a, a, a nice mouth feel to it and it's gonna be delicious and all I do in terms of prepping the potatoes for this I've seen a lot of people say you need to boil, uh, boil potatoes whole which you can if you want I personally don't feel the need to do that um, for potatoes this size which I mean, I've got a, a big hand. I suppose I could get a banana for scale. Um, but this is, I would say, smaller than a baseball, but oh, I would say probably about as big around as a, a billiards ball. That's probably going to be the best way to put it. A billiards ball or like a snooker uh, ball. It's about that size. Um, I try to grab potatoes are about the same size just so then that way everything cooks evenly and I'm not you know dealing with a tiny potato and I'm not dealing with a giant potato because um, I want everything to be done at the same time so all I do is I will cut them into quarters and then into the pot that's it that is the extent of my preparation for potatoes I mean, I'm not like sitting here going, oh, okay, you know, trying to look at exact amounts, um, making sure that all the quarters are all nice and even and everything like that. I'm just kind of whatever. I mean, it's mashed potatoes. It's not that big of a deal. And there we go. Uh, the other thing that I do is I also heavily salt it. Um, so this bin here, um, I have, well, it's actually off camera at the moment. Uh, this is a bin of uh, Korean sea salt that I keep by the stove, and it's what I use to salt the water. And so this is about, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of salt. Um, so then that way the potatoes start out life really nicely seasoned. And I only have to do mild adjustments when it comes to final seasoning, uh, which will usually be just straight up black pepper. Um, in this case, I'm not, you know, I'm not mixing in any cheese. I'm not stirring in any um, green onions or anything like that. It was just straight up mashed potatoes. Um, but if you wanted to, I mean, you could, it's a blank canvas. You can literally make whatever you want, top it with whatever you want. Um, you can go crazy with it. There's all sorts of fun things that you can do with them. Um, but we're just keeping it simple. I mean, it's just Monday night, you know? Uh, but lastly, before I add the water,
got a handful of garlic cloves because I got them. I like to buy the garlic uh, peeled in like five pound bags, uh, which is about two kilos for those in the civilized world. Um, and I keep them on hand and go through them like crazy. Um, so I will cover this by about, I don't know, about an inch or so. And what I do is I will bring it up to a hard boil and then turn it down to really low where it's just a bare simmer. Um, and then let it simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes before I start checking the potatoes at that point, um, just to see if they're nice and tender. And then if they are nice and tender, that's when I'll go ahead and drain them, uh, take them back to the stove, crank up the, the burner, and then dry them out. So then that way um, it can accept all the yummy goodness that I'm gonna throw into it. So I'm gonna boil these over on my stove over here as opposed to my little portable burner. So then that way I don't have a plume of steam hitting a uh, my, the laptop here. Um, but I, when it comes time to actually mash them and do everything else, I'll bring them back here and we'll do it so then that way you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, liquidity. Can you use minced garlic from a jar in a pinch or should you use actual cloves? Excellent question. Uh, you can use either. Um, I have both. Um, just for the ease of doing things sometimes because sometimes I don't really feel like getting an actual head of garlic actually peeling it, actually working with it and everything like that. Sometimes I just want to grab a scoop of chopped garlic. So yes, absolutely. Feel free to put in as much of the chopped garlic as you want. Um, it will still work really well. Uh, I will say that the flavor of the chopped garlic is not as pronounced as fresh garlic, obviously, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't use it. So I'm going to go cover this with water and just get it onto the stove. And I just realized that after I put stuff in the oven that I failed to hit start on my timer that I set. Okay, and... Okay. So that's three or four items already out of the way. Lastly, let us work on the salad. So, it's a tomato cucumber salad. I mean, it's cucumber, it's tomato, um, I throw in green onions, and because I like the flavor and I want a color difference, a uh, little orange and yellow bell pepper, not the entirety of it, because uh, it's just two of us, and it doesn't really, um, doesn't really uh, age well, I should say. It's one of those things you just make it fresh and then eat it, you know, when you make it. Uh, the only other things that I'm going to add are going to be these nuts, uh, which are delicious. A little for the chef. Hail hydrate everybody. The D's command is busted at the moment, um, Grant. It's okay. The emote is still there though. If you go into BTTV, it's still there. Um, yeah, exactly. But uh, it'll be fixed by tomorrow. I didn't realize I had broken it earlier when I was setting up the uh, streamer bot, but that's okay. Um, the only thing I'm going to add is some feta cheese to this because feta in this is delicious. So I, for the two of us, will do probably half of this cucumber. Oh, wow. See that? That cavity. That does not. Okay. 
Hmm. All right, so it only went a little bit, so it's not too bad. I rinsed this off earlier anyways. This is just a wide peeler. It's a cone racone. Just a little peeler. I mean, whatever peeler you want. Doesn't really matter. I like to do it away from myself. Just force a habit. So, yeah, let's do a little bit more. There we go. So, funny thing that popped up for me, I don't remember how long ago it was, it's talking about the bitterness of cucumbers because there is there does tend to be an inherent bitterness to them and there was a I think it was I don't remember if it was like on TikTok or whatever and they said oh cut the end off and then rub it you know rub it a bunch so then that way it gets rid of the uh, the bitterness of it and I remember watching it and thinking to myself I'm like that's just dumb um, because how on earth is rubbing a cut piece like this going to remove the bitterness from the rest of it osmosis doesn't work that quick that's just not that's just not reality um, but if you do you know if you, you do have an aversion to the bitterness of uh, cucumbers after cutting them up just soak them in water for a little bit and it will it'll help definitely it won't necessarily get rid of everything but it'll definitely help um, so I'm just doing this into bite-sized pieces because Last thing I want to do is eat absolutely gargantuan pieces of cucumber or tomato or anything for that matter. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Don't scrape anyone. Me and my board scrapers. <laughs> All right. Save the rest of this cucumber for another another salad. We'll leave that there for the time being. So right now, these little um, heavenly kind of marzanos, um, they're like these baby San Marzano style tomatoes uh, are in season and we're huge fans of them. Uh, they just seem to have a fantastic flavor right now. Um, what's funny is when we first uh, moved up here, uh, the Village brand, they were grown in Canada, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so I didn't really expect there to be a huge tomato production out of Canada, but you know what? Thanks Canada for all your many treasures. So I'm just cutting them in a quarters, unless it, oh, there aren't any of the huge ones. Sometimes, because uh, these have been, you know, uh, popping up in the market for the last probably two months, I think. Um, some of the ones that have popped up have been probably twice as big as this. But since these are all relatively small, quarters will do nicely. Easy lemon squeezy. And to be honest, this whole dinner tonight is pretty common. Um, maybe not each individual portion, but kind of the same same idea. Um, and generally speaking, the, it comes together pretty quick. I know I personally like to, when I can at least, set it up in such a way that um, everything is in the oven. And so it's literally like, okay, so I'm doing, say that oven fried chicken, that's in the oven. Um, roasting whatever vegetation, that's in the oven. Uh, if I'm doing um, 
an oven roasted potato that's also in there at the same time and so then that way once it all goes in the oven I can just back away and sit down and keep it nice and easy and at the 30 minute mark flip things smash potatoes stir up the veg and then back in for however long it needs and then dinner's all ready at one time maybe make a salad to go with it um, but yeah that's really about it um, interesting thing about the salad course if you look at the different types of services at restaurants um, and what I mean is is that if you get some of the higher-end restaurants use um, uh, it's like either like a French service or sometimes a Russian service as it's known um, where things come out in specific courses what you'll see is a lot of times that the salad course actually will happen at the after the main meal so after any appetizers after any uh, main course you'll have your salad course afterwards and there's a great reason for it because all the roughage and everything in here pushes everything out of your system and so traditionally that's when the salad course is served whereas nowadays most people like or restaurants will actually serve uh, salads first but traditionally speaking and if we're talking gut health and things like that uh, salad course should in fact be last um, so just a fun fact I tend to be full of those kinds of things so I'm just chopping up some green onions to go in some of these tails are a little bit longer but that's all right and I just like to slice them up nice and thin so then that way I don't have big mouthfuls of green onion in what I'm chewing on. pepper so for this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the top and the bottom and pull out the stem bit so I still have the top but I'm gonna keep the top and the bottom because that's still good pepper or capsicum, depending on what part of the world you're in. Cut out those inner bits. And then we'll do the same for the yellow pepper. So in that way I've got some color contrast. And I'll probably end up using it half of it. So I'll set that off there. All I'm doing is laying my knife blade flat against it and just kind of sawing along. We'll do half of that. Get rid of as many of the seeds as possible because our bodies can't digest them. But if one or two should get you out of here, oh, dude, have yourself a good dinner, Grant. Um, yeah. Uh, have a wonderful night. Say hi to the family. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. That's all set. So all I'm doing is cutting these guys into strips.
back to the side and doing some squares. Going back if I need to. I mean, I'm not aiming for precision cutting for this. I mean, it'd be one thing if I was doing something that needed the, the presentation and the precise cuts, then I would actually take my time and do really precise cuts that look super uniform. Um, but for this kind of thing, it's just going in our mouth holes and it's just us, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, but that's it for the vegetation for the salad. Um, I won't put the nuts or the cheese in until we're about ready to eat. Um, so now it's purely a waiting game. Let's see. All right, that's at a full boil. So I'm just going to set that on there and set a timer for 10 minutes. Got that. I can put this away. I can put that away. I can put these away. So yeah, right now really it's hanging out. Um, I grabbed a chair. hang out I mean like I said this is generally speaking how dinners go here is I try to knock out as much as I can as quickly as I can and then you know hang out and wait for it to be ready uh, Mrs. Hueso should be home relatively quick I think uh, depends on whether or not she got out at a reasonable time today I don't see a text from her. Oh, dude, liquidity. I'm I'm still in shock, honestly. Um, it is absolutely amazing. I am, yeah, I, I absolutely love. Yes, I have. Uh, it played at the beginning of the stream today. It'll play at the very end. Um, if I throw up the intermission screen, it should uh, play in that also. Um, let me go wash off my knife real quick and I'll fire it up. This knife in particular, I have to make sure that I dry absolutely immediately because it has a uh, a carbon steel core and the edge of it will rust if it's left wet and that's no bueno because I love that knife and I paid a non insignificant amount of money for it so I want to keep it nice that goes there good. Hail Hydrate, everybody. Let's pop that in the fridge. Put those away. Okay. All right. Let's see about... see about playing it uh, that's it right there okay so in theory this should work
What's it gonna be? DK's making a snack today. Shove it right into your mouth. DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? Is he making it to me? DK's making a snack today. It's time for tactical snacking with DK. Hopefully that came through for you. Did it? Uh, did it play for you, Liquidity? Yes, yes, it is. I'm glad. I'm glad it came through. Um, yeah, that was absolutely amazing. It's puppy, puppy, you're just gonna have to wait. Sorry, little girl. You're just gonna have to wait to go outside. Hi, Vera. That's Vera. She's our puppy, even though she's six. We've had her since she was like, I don't know, nine weeks old. Little girl, hey. Oh, here comes the big guy. He knows what's happening. Good girl. You have to go, boy. Okay, off you go. <laughs> Jane's all about the snacks. Um, he's just all about food, period. But uh, a lot of times, if, if I'm in here cooking, he's laying on the mat right in front of the stove. Uh, for whatever reason, he just loves it, just probably because of the heat or something like that. But uh, now they're like, hey, we want to go outside. I'm like, I'm sorry. If I let you outside, I got to watch you guys. It's just going to have to wait, little girl. Yes, most dogs, in fact, are all about the food. Jane especially. I mean, that's kind of a superpower is that he's just always hungry. So, but, yeah. So, anybody got any questions? Any any type of food questions, anything like that, hit me. Whatever, you, whatever question you might have, whatever. be a cricket sound right about here do I use ghee you know what uh, I do actually um, I don't buy it I make it since it's literally just clarified butter that you've separated the um, milk solids out of um, and to be honest like I put brown butter on my popcorn um, if I got rid of those milk solids it would have just been straight up ghee um, but yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, potato or ricotta gnocchi? Hey, Ian Mick, 65, welcome, welcome. Um, potato or ricotta gnocchi? <sighs> potato. Um, I'm gonna say potato. Uh, personally, I'm not the biggest ricotta fan, just for whatever reason. Um, I'm not like, you know, whatever, but if I, to choose between the two, I prefer, uh, I prefer the potato, definitely. Oh, nice. Uh, do you sear your steak in the ghee and then add the Herbs Night songs? Since that's super common. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Searing it in in ghee is fantastic. Um, generally speaking, when it comes to steaks around here, I will sous vide them, uh, usually seasoned, and then finish them off out back with my weed burner. Um, not the 420 type of weed burner, but like an actual yard weed burner. Um, 
usually that's how I end up doing, but yeah, searing them in like a cast iron pan is fantastic. Um, however you like to eat it. Black garlic. Uh, I love black garlic. I was introduced to black garlic fairly early on in my um, my culinary school days. I assisted, the school had been hired to work at the Palm, like Palm Wonderful and Wonderful Pistachios, uh, to work at their booth at this, um, it was the Produce Marketers Association show. And it was myself and three instructors that were at the show. And while I was there and I had a chance to, to walk around and check things out, there was a, a vendor that was showcasing black garlic. And I'm like, black garlic, what on earth is that? And so that's where I first learned about it and I tried it and I was just like, wow, this is, this is kind of amazing. And I had looked up like how to make it. And it was interesting because I guess in Korea, the traditional method is that it's packed into, oh, potato checking time. Um, it is, packed into um, like a crock and kind of kept near the heater and then it's just left for like a long time. Now what's interesting is there's um, somebody online that has said that you can make it using a rice cooker and leaving it on the warming function for like a month, which I was like, okay, you know, if that's kind of your jam, then I, I don't know. I'd have a difficult time justifying keeping my rice cooker, which is actually just sitting right out of frame here because we had rice last night, um, keeping it on warm for a month. Ooh, black garlic salt. I bet that is good. Bet that's real good. All right, so I'm gonna go drain the potatoes since they're ready. And um, all I'm gonna do is I'm using the lid to drain the, the water and everything into the sink. And then I'm gonna put it back onto the stove over high heat and dry them out. And then afterwards, uh, I'll bring them back over here and show you how I make everything from that point. we go okay let's grab Team mashed potato here. I just grabbed the pepper grinder, a uh, thing of heavy whipping cream, stick of butter, and my spatula. And then I also have my potato masher all ready to go. So my methodology when it comes to mashed potatoes is first and foremost, I gotta add butter. Now this is not the healthiest recipe in the world. But yes, I just added a full stick of butter. Um, I, I'm not eating an, an absolute ton of the potatoes. So whatever butter is in here is only 
per portion is only going to be maybe a couple of tablespoons at most. Um, if you 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 know if that freaks you out and you're like no wait hold up can't have that much butter you can go ahead and add less however in my experience with these potatoes this is what works for me so then I just give it a good initial mash in order to break it down and kind of get to more or less the consistency that I want and in this case because it's you know I've got the skins and everything in there it's a little bit more rustic and then once I've got that mash done I can just scrape off the potatoes and then get this into a soak um, so then that way the the masher isn't an absolute nightmare to wash and I'll also switch over to this uh, spatula at this point because that's what all I'm going to need. Hi, Jane. All right. I've got water in the sink, so we're good to go there. Okay. So here we have our base potatoes, but I I have found, at least in my experience, that heavy cream kind of makes um, the best consistency in my opinion uh, as opposed to milk or anything else however if you want to use uh, like say chicken broth or vegetable broth have at it if you want to use milk because it's what you got have at it I happen to have heavy cream so I'm going to use heavy cream um, if you want to use margarine go right ahead um, so the reason why I dry out the potatoes is because if you don't, that boiling water is what's gonna kind of make up the consistency. This way by drying them out, whatever liquids I add into it is gonna be the predominant flavor. That water will um, act as kind of a flavor reducer and I wanna add flavor. So at this point, in terms of like the actual amounts, it is, again, I've never measured it. I, I kind of look at the consistency and what, you know, and mixing it, looking at it. And you have to also keep in mind that as you're mixing up the potatoes, that the starches will start to firm up. So whatever the consistency is in the pot when you're done, it, it will thicken up by the time it hits the table. So if it ends up being a little bit smoother than you would prefer, fear not, they will thicken up a bit. Um, that effect happens much more predominantly with russet potatoes versus these. But I, like I said, I just go off of looking at the consistency. So I don't know, that's maybe a third of a cup, I think I just added. I mean, I've been making potatoes for years and years and years. I became the pre predominant uh, mashed potato maker in the household growing up. Um, there, we would usually have whipped potatoes, meaning instead of a hand masher like I used, uh, we would use a hand mixer and literally whip them up into a really smooth and creamy uh, consistency. And every so often, I like having those, but. I also like having the skins. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Just trying to make sure that I get everything that's in the bottom. So then that way there's no pockets of anything. And that's a pretty good consistency. Let's taste them. Mmm. That's tasty. Both Mrs. Waisel and myself are big fans of black pepper and mashed potatoes, so yeah. Um, we definitely add a fair amount to them. And I wouldn't be surprised if she ends up adding more, because um, she absolutely adores black pepper with her potatoes. So, we shall see. Okay.
that's looking real good. So I'm just going to pop the lid on these and put them at the back of the stove so it's close to the, uh, the sort of the vent for the oven and it kind of helps keep them warm a little bit. Hey buddy. I'll just hang on to the spoon chilla because we'll use that dish up and just put everything away. Hey big guy. Okay. Let's see, how much time do we have on the clock? 12 minutes. So we literally have 12 minutes to kill. Yeah. Did, Lump did Lumpy Pickle show up? Hang on. Bring it over and scroll up. No. Nope. Yeah. I know uh, Lumpy's, his work situation has just been super crazy recently with the, I guess his company is moving locations and he's having to coordinate a whole bunch of stuff and set things up and so I know he's been really really busy with that um, but yeah who knows maybe he'll make it maybe not and if not it's okay um, ah. some little D's nuts. Those are big old honking pieces too. That's for the, I, I will, I usually won't dress the salad until we're just about ready to eat. Um, Mrs. Hueso tends to prefer less dressing than I do. Uh, for something like this, I actually like it to be a bit on the heavier side. Um, that's just my own personal preference. I, for something like this, I will probably use uh, an Italian style dressing. I'm not a huge fan of using uh, creamy dressings for, for this. So things like blue cheese or ranch. Uh, I can't say that I'm uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of it with this just because of how moist uh, cucumbers and tomatoes and everything are and by adding the cream type it tends to water it down and you lose some of the punch whereas with a vinaigrette you still get that acidic punch and I, I just prefer it that way um, probably dress it with yeah, like I said, an Italian dressing, just something bottled that we have, as opposed to, you know, don't necessarily have to mix something all the time. It's just not really necessary. Especially for, you know, weeknight dinner or something like that. Yeah, and if you dress it early, it can very well get soggy. Um, but it also, you know, you add a little bit, you mix it up and kind of see where it's at. So in that way you have the right amount on there. But most likely what we'll end up doing is Mrs. Weso will scoop out however much she plans on eating. And then I'll just eat straight from the bowl here because I'm a savage like that, I suppose. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I don't know why people tend to cringe at the, the idea of the word moist, no clue. But um, it doesn't bother me, but we have some friends that absolutely hate that word. And so sometimes we'll have to skirt around to figure out uh, a different word. But then sometimes I'm just like, nah, forget it. We're just calling it moist. Olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt and parm. Perfect. Yeah. No, absolutely. That works really nice. Uh, a balsamic vinaigrette, uh, balsamic vinegar would work really well too. Um, sherry vinegar would work really nice. Rice vinegar would work really nice. Or actually, since we're talking vinegar, this is one of my very favorite vinegars. 
It's actually made in the Philippines. It's a Cangaloco. It's a cane vinegar, um, and it's a dark brown cane vinegar. Uh, however, there is a vinegar that I prefer over this one. It's just a little bit more difficult for me to get. It is produced in Louisiana by a company called Steens. S-T-E-E-N-S. -E -E Steens makes uh, a cane sugar products. One of the things they make is a cane vinegar and it is phenomenal. Um, I was having to order it from, from Louisiana for a while and the cheapest place that I ever found online to get it was, I think it was Paul Perdome's website or something like that. Oh. Jane, you look so sad. Is it because you're not getting any snackos? Dude, you've had so many snacks today. Plus you're getting fed in a while anyway, so I can't say I feel too bad for you. But uh, yeah, if you can find, um, if you can find Steen's cane vinegar, um, like I said, predominantly in the Louisiana area, I don't know how far outside of Louisiana it goes, but if you can find it, use it. Um, it is absolutely phenomenal. I would say, uh, it, since a lot of people, kind of their go-to vinegars, a lot of times tend to be like apple cider vinegar, which is fine, and if you like it and use it, I would use this in place of cider vinegar any day. It is so good. Have I ever cooked with banules? It's a wonderful vin. I always use to finish roasted mushrooms. Just a few drops mixed in at the end after cooking. Just brings a certain richness and flavor that works really well. Wonderful finish. Banyuls, Banyuls vinegar? That sounds really familiar, but I can't place it at the moment. Um, yeah, it sounds super familiar. It's a French vinegar, okay. Is it, um, Banyuls, is it, oh gosh. Is it kind of related to, oh, thanks for the late night song. Let's actually, Open that in a new tab. I'm just curious. Yo! $24 for a three pack? Oof. That is. That's like crack prices. I think when I was ordering it, I think I paid maybe three bucks a bottle. Um, but. Well, since I have this open, let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Really need to get an external keyboard for this. Oh, okay, Banyuls. I, I thought it sounded familiar. Yeah, so it's a red wine vinegar made with Vindu, or sweet wine. Harvested from Grenache. Okay. I thought it sounded super familiar. Let's do that. Do do do. Right on. We'll have to check that out. Noise. So. But uh, like I said, I really like that cane vinegar. Uh, it's one of my very favorites, and thankfully it's not terribly expensive, and I find it at, there's actually a number of markets in the area that carry it, that, um, that carry that particular brand, and there's a few other cane vinegars that are out there, but that particular one, the, the brown Sakanga Loco, that's the one that I really gravitate to, and I will use it for most things just you know pickling vinaigrettes whatever it's it is my go-to um, just because it's not super crazy flavored uh, in any particular direction it's just super delicious uh, the seasoning on the roasted Romanesco tonight is uh, l there's a little bit of grapeseed oil which doesn't have any flavor but uh, salt and the butt glitter mixture that I make and that's a saltless seasoning blend that consists of uh, black pepper, granulated garlic, granulated onion. Um, what else? Some cayenne pepper in there. 
Why am I planking? <laughs> I actually have the, the recipe uh, posted online. Let's see. Pepper, garlic, onion. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that is everything. Yeah. Black pepper, granulated onion, granulated garlic, and cayenne pepper. It's usually in a ratio of black so black pepper granulated garlic granulated onion and then cayenne pepper or whatever kind of spicy pepper that you like uh ratio is usually six was it six four six four two one i think it is i guess i'd have it written down which I think I actually need to mix up another batch pretty quick. I also need to mix up another batch of the saltless taco seasoning that I make. Um, we are running low on that. It's really hard to find taco seasoning that doesn't have any salt in it. Um, it's I've not really found one, and so I've had to result to making my own just because I, I prefer to control the salt content myself. Um, which is why I'm not a huge fan of most seasoning blends because usually the first ingredient that's on the list is salt and I want salt to the point where I'm happy but I'm gonna want a lot of that spice blend flavor so that's just kind of my own feeling on that and this is why I was running late tonight she hasn't texted either but it's Monday and I know usually Mondays are on the busier side for her. But, yeah, very much time is left. Oh, 55 seconds on the clock. Cool. Let's see. giant welding mitts is the fact that when my timers go off that uh, it tends to be really difficult to turn them off because giant fingers so we're just gonna let the broiler come up to temp and then pop the uh, the chicken thighs underneath and then I will bring everything over and plate up uh, so we can kind of see what's going on and uh, yeah so Monday night dinner baby nice and simple I mean I've been going for what an hour and a half I mean I did um, a little bit of prep uh, basically just making that marinade and getting the chicken in it that start to finish took maybe 20 minutes not very long at all and I've been talking through most of it so dinner tonight like most dinners um, usually come together pretty quick um, unless I'm making something much more involved it will generally normally come together pretty quick and that's probably will be the case on wednesday um no clue what i'm having for dinner yet um i don't generally decide until close to the like sometimes the day of maybe the night before just kind of whatever strikes my fancy um that's just kind of how i roll so yeah so what's everyone else having for dinner tonight Everybody is starving tonight. <laughs> mm. 
Gale Hydrate. Soup and Sadness. Oh, I'm sorry, Renfield. Soup is good food, though. I love me soup. But you know what, man? Um, I was single for a really long time, and so I totally understand. Um, in fact, there was a good stretch of time where I, I was certain that I was going to never never meet anybody, never get married or anything like that. Um, and Mrs. Wayso actually, we had been friends for a good long while beforehand. And <laughs> it's a funny story, but the, the, the first night that we met, she flatly said to my face that um, she, you know, wanted nothing to do with me really. Um, but we were friendly and hung out with the same sort of group of people. And it wasn't until years later and effectively an act of God <laughs> that said, hey, wait, he's, you know, single. And she's all oh, okay, fine. And we went out and it's, you know, it's, we've been happily married ever since. It'll be 15 years in September. So night song meatloaf yukon gold mashed potatoes roasted brussels sprouts brussels sprouts with bacon and balsamic oh that sounds awesome i love me a good meatloaf <laughs> landing a plane chili very nice liquidity oh that's right you're doing it in the instant pot so that sh that'll be really interesting I'm, I'm i'll be really curious to hear how that turns out um having made traditional chili for a long time um I'm a little skeptical about the Instant Pot for that sort of thing, but I'm more than happy to give it a shot. Um, oof. Renfield. Sorry, buddy. That, uh, that sucks. Sorry, man. 15 degrees. Is that 15 Fahrenheit or Celsius? Massachusetts nice I lived in Connecticut for a while so yeah okay see there you go it's all about looking at the positive stuff there Renfield it's all about you know intentional family having good friends and you know if you got that you're doing okay um, thankfully you know we've been lucky enough to have been kind of attracted to the same uh, twitch family uh, by way of uh, Unleash the Archers and in general everybody's been super awesome um, so thankfully it's a, uh, it's a it's a good group of folk ooh that's rough man okay I'm thinking the broiler should be up to temp so I moved the rack up to the top shelf and we're gonna watch it just because of our history with broilers and everything that's going on with them um, so I will put the chicken thighs underneath the broiler for I'm gonna do it for a minute and then check and then I'll probably rotate and then do it for another minute until I get a little bit more color on that skin. There we go. Because we like the black bits. Um, when my grandpa Jack would make it growing up, because he did it over a charcoal grill and was constantly turning it, the, the chicken was a lot of times uh, on the blacker side. That's just the nature of how I made it and so that's kind of that flavor that I remember is the that charcoal grilled chicken and most of the times it was at least from what I remember it was chicken legs um, that's what he would make I don't recall him doing other parts but then again this I was pretty young and that's sort of the memory that I have of it so move that over Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, nice. All right, we are almost there. Okay. Thirty-four 
30 seconds on the clock then those should be done and then uh, we can plate up would he cook the whole chicken mom avocado green KitchenAid is my mom by the way I don't okay see I just remember the legs but it could just end up being because I was a kid and that's just the part of the chicken that I wanted um, but I like I said I only remember the legs but I have no doubt that he did the whole thing okay that's the timer We don't have sets of dishes in our household. We have all the plates are different, and I just wanted the uh, turn up plate tonight. That's just kind of what I was feeling. All right. Excuse me, Jane. Thank you. Grab a couple of thighs here. And then let's grab some of the Romanesco. some of the mashed potatoes. put a full stick of butter in there you always got to have that additional bit of butter you just you kind of have to and let's turn that one off and there we go grandpa chicken roasted romanesco mashed potatoes let's try that romanesco Mm. It's got a great flavor to it. It's still a little crunchy, which is how I like it. Let's get it on those potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. Excellent. The garlic flavor comes through. It's not overpowering, but it's there. Nice and creamy, but still has a little bit of texture from the skin and the lumps. Um, butter just makes everything better. And then let's tuck in with the chicken. Hmm, hot. Mmm. Yeah. Citrus flavor comes through. The savoriness from the Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of pepper. Excellent stuff. Just, yeah. And then, gotta do some of the... Look at that chicken skin. It's nice and crispy. Mmm. Mmm. That is the stuff. Crispy chicken skin is one of the best things 
on this earth, in my opinion. I'm not going to worry about dressing and trying the salad just yet, only because I've eaten it a billion times, and I know it's going to be good. So, how's the flavor from the marinade? The flavor from the marinade comes through fantastic. That citrus flavor, you get a nice um, citrus punch, but it's not like not like super puckery but it's there um it is not too salty it's not too anything it's just like if you love like a lemon herb chicken or something like that this kind of thing is right up your alley um i would not be opposed if somebody were to take this and decide hey i'm going to throw in some rosemary or some herbs um i wouldn't be opposed to it if you wanted to do it please have at it um this is just kind of my take on a family recipe and so it, it is kind of how it is um yeah so that is uh that is it for this evening folks uh thanks so much for coming and hanging out and we will do this again probably wednesday night um barring any uh, any big events that should pop up um I don't think I have any meetings or anything like that scheduled, so should be good to go there. Uh, thank you so much again uh, for everybody that has stopped by, that has perked up in chat for the lurkers. Um, hey, thanks for coming and hanging out. Uh, thank you, uh, Kaifeman. Um, I'm not sure if I said that right. Kaifeman. Kaifeman uh, from the UK. Thanks so much for coming over and for the, for the follow. Um, yeah, everybody, have yourself a, a wonderful evening. Um, I will see you all in chat. All right? Take care, folks. Have a good night. Hello, boys and ghouls. DK's making a snack today. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? DK's making a snack today. Shove it right into your mouth. DK's making a snack today. What's it going to be? Is he making it for me? DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? DK's making a snack today. Shove it right into your mouth. DK's making a snack today. What's it gonna be? Is he making it for me? DK's making a snack today. It's time for tactical snacking with DK. What's it gonna be?